those are the daddies. She'll bite you. Well, it's been quite a few months since I started this project of creating a vegetable, herbal, basically a potager on a slope, a useless slope which is unattractive and unproductive beneath our pump house and going down the hill. So these were the original plans that I had made for this garden. And most of it has remained the same, but a few things have changed, especially up in this area right here. So these were the original plans. I really liked them, but I have got new plans and I have put them into practice. So let's take a look at the new plans, then we'll go take a look at the slope. So the original plan didn't change that much. I just sort of expanded the beds up here on the top to include a large bed for corn and sunflowers, zinnias, marigolds. This could extend all the way to here. This is a dry creek that runs from the pump house when it overflows and this just pours down here. So this area right now, it's got nothing. Here are the steps. This is now a rock raised bed with two old ladders using, using those for trellises. And then um, up here at the pump house, cleaned all this out and created a grape arbor over here and a small little garden bed below that. And then over here is another small bed. This is for pumpkins to hopefully travel down that hill eventually. And over here, I haven't put that on my plan yet, but it, it's a blackberry trellis, which has already been put in. And this is all, so far, just nothing but grass. So that will eventually be filled in. So the plan really stayed pretty much true to the original one. Just added a few more things. So in the following clips, I'm going to show you what the slope looked like before I started working on it. And then the following weeks thereafter, up until today, and what's going on now. But before we go up there, there's a few things I would like to say. First, let's take a look at this notebook dedicated completely to the slope. I have a notebook for every garden. Because being that it's the month of July and nearly August, you have to want to know what can I plant at this time of year. And it's important for me, especially because I got these beds in so late, that I have a list of things that I can put in the garden now. And there is a lot that you can still seed and sow in your garden. For example, there are many beneficial insect plantings that you can put in, insect repellent plantings, and companion plants. So that's one thing you want to think about when you're planting. What are great companions for the things you're putting in? It's great to find a little chart. I found this online. It's a good companion planting chart because certain vegetables and uh, herbs go really great with other vegetables, herbs, and flowers. They just help each other out. So that makes them good companions. And there are also some things that are bad companions. And if you get a chart like this, you can learn all about that. If you have a particular plant that you can't find on the chart, you can look it up online and you can certainly find out, for example, what goes great with grapes. And since I put in four grape plants, I need to know what I can put at the foot of those grapes. And my list is right here to help me out. There are also a lot of plants that are great um, insect repellents, so you can repel those bad insects and you can attract some of the good insects. And a lot of those have to do with flowers and herbs and wonderful things that you can put in and they can grow right alongside your vegetables and it just makes your garden more interesting, more beautiful. And so we'll talk about that as well when we go up the hill. So. Let's take a look at what happened uh, several weeks ago and then what's been going on for the last couple weeks. Actually, the last couple months.
You may have wondered why I completely quit showing this garden on a slope. Well, the reason is because I couldn't get any soil in the beds until recently, which actually yesterday, our neighbor came over with his tractor and he got me piles and piles of soil. Now I've still got to mix this up. This is just going in the base. These beds take a lot of soil to fill. It's just amazing. And then I took down the logs that were over here. They just kept falling over. So this beautiful bed of Rudavecchia also has bee balm. It had Penston in it a month ago. I've got a chestnut rose and the bee balm is just about to put out seed. So up here on the slope I've come a long way. Um, I still have a long way to go, but at least I got all the beds filled in. Some of them only halfway, but I planted in them anyway. As the years go by, the level of the soil will rise because I'll just keep adding more and more compost every year. But I'll just take you up there and show you what I have done up there. One of the challenges in using the raised metal beds is the fact that they're pretty modern and contemporary. And because I have a very rustic garden and a rustic home, that's and a look I really wanted to avoid. So trying to meld my antique old world style with these metal beds has been interesting, to say the least. But I think I've figured out a way to do it. When you combine, when I've combined the logs, all the log structures here, just using the things that we had available and then putting the rectangular raised beds on stone that really helped a lot and of course when the plants start coming in then things start to look really pretty good and then also a lot of these raised beds turn to a zinc color and they really are rather pleasant looking, just like an old watering trough. Like this one here has really faded out and turned to a nice kind of a pewter zinc. What I really love is this little corner and how this little corner evolved. Because you know, no matter how much and how carefully you plan your garden on paper, things are always going to change. And usually for the better. And little things happen that give your garden a lot more charm and interest. And this was one of them. I remember when there was an apple tree growing here and we moved that apple tree. Now when you get into, you come around the bend here to go into the slope vegetable garden, there are pots and pots of herbs. So we have thyme, rosemary, Russian sage, comfrey. I've started these little lavenders from seed. We'll see how they do. We have some lemon verbena, uh, blueberry bush in the pot, some more thyme and two spearmints. Now these may be moved to other parts of the garden because the spearmint in particular is pretty good at um, getting bugs away from your plants because they do not like the scent. So that's a good companion plant for certain vegetables. But I just love the way this little corner turned out. And you know, it's just a small thing, but it gives me great pleasure to see that. And behind that is the maiden's garden, which we planted what, what, two, three years ago maybe? The Maiden's Garden is the, the garden with the pussy willows and it's got roses in it now. So you've got pollinators behind this garden. It's always filled with, um, let's see, what's it filled with? <laughs> sedum, it's always filled with sedum for sure. And Dianthus Sweet William, it's got roses in it and uh, penstemons and lots of rutabicchia, and usually cosmos as well. But it's a great backdrop for the vegetable garden, and it also helps it produce because of all the pollinators in this garden. But also, this garden is a great backdrop for the slope garden. It's just all working out pretty well. I mean, these things can take years and years to come together, and this is one of those projects that really it will still change and evolve as time goes on, but, but so far I'm, I'm pretty happy well, I really with it. love the planting on this corner as well. This is the, the uh, other end of the path on the first tier. And here we have comfrey. Comfrey grows pretty prolifically, as you know if you've ever had it, but it's a very good plant. 
adds nitrogen to the soil and the roots just go very, very deep and they go underneath everything and they just give a great nutritional value to the soil for anything that it's planted around. This is little bee bombs that I planted from my little seedlings from the greenhouse along with some amaranth. There's some flowers in here and there are a couple roses. Oh, there's a weed. But I really love this corner too. And if you do a quick turnaround, see them. Roses. Daisies. Joe Pie. Comfrey. Blueberries in pots were one of the first things I planted here. Four of them scattered in between every raised bed here on the first level and I didn't get any <laughs> blueberries at all, but it was their first year. Great so was... companion plant for your garden, as far as pollinators go, are bee balm. And these bee balm are growing right behind the blueberry bushes. You'll notice that I put an awful lot of marigolds all around the garden because the marigolds are a repellent. They keep the bad insects at bay. But here's an example of a trap plant. I call it, actually, I call it, a decoy. This poor little amaranth has been being devoured by worms. But the good thing is they're eating the amaranth and that's what it's here for. They're eating the amaranth instead of the tomatoes and this little watermelon. This is uh, Cinderella watermelon over here. So they're eating that. I wish I had planted more. Next year I will know to plant a lot of amaranth because it's really easy to grow from seed. One of the things that have prevented me from finishing my slope garden is this pump house. The pump house is great. Unfortunately, it's been taken over by, guess what, poison ivy. There was twice as much poison ivy here this morning as there is now. Now there's also another plant up there and that one I want. It's a trumpet vine, which has been there for 30 years. But suddenly, I guess last summer, I didn't pay much attention to it because I wasn't I didn't have a garden on a slope. I didn't think about it that much. Then I get up closer and I find out that this is just inundated with poison ivy. So I tried to spray it with a weed killer, but that didn't work. It's just too thick. So now I've been up here cutting it out very carefully. Now in order to kill that poison ivy that is covering the roof of the pump house, the thing I had to do was I had to get down, and this is a root. This is a poison ivy root right here. This is the um, trumpet vine. We did, I didn't want to kill that, but I had to get in here and just cut all of these on the very bottom, all the roots to prevent, to kill the plant, to actually kill the plant. And these, there were at least six of these thick vines surrounding the pump house, but it worked because all the leaves are drying up up there. You can see that. And the poison ivy is finally dying. You can see that the door is pretty much uh, an old mess, but I like it. I like it, except I think I'm going to fix the broken glass on it, remove that piece of, mm, I don't know what that is, piece of foam or something behind the windows. And I'm just going to keep that door all shabby chic like it is and inside the pump house we don't use the pump house anymore we have city water now and that's good because it was a sulfur well we're going to clean that out inside and i'm just going to store tools in it now at last i can take this little space right here at the top of the slope garden and put in a trellis or some sort of an arbor to plant the grapes you see I just didn't want to do it when the poison ivy was still there. But I have a nice little space here at the top. Well, the, the heat has been merciless and it's been really difficult to get out here and do this until late in the afternoon. But it's a pretty simple structure. I just have about four grape vines to plant here. So what I've done is I've sunk, actually James dug the holes for me. I cannot dig holes in this gravel. For these four by four by eights, they're sunk about one and a half to two feet deep. Of course, a little bit less on this. It's on a slope, so in order to make it even, this one was not sunk quite so deeply. 
and then the horizontal braces. I just cut the edges with my jigsaw and these were eight by one by six. Yes, everything is pressure treated. Wow, I have a great view up here at the top of the ladder. Working on the trellis. Putting on these crossbars here. And I've even got a cool breeze. Okay, all right, so I've got the grapes in. I've got the arbor finished. And I've also dug a small garden bed all the way around the grapes. I've got two Catawba grapes and two Thompson grapes. Probably too many grapes for such a small arbor, but I'm not taking any chances in case I kill one or two of them. I just want to have some in reserve. So I'm up here and I need something that I can plant at this time of the year to go with the grapes and also it would be a good companion planting for grapes. So one of the companion plantings for grapes would be a rosemary. So I purchased a very small one here to put on the corner. Another good plan is mint. Um, they say any kind of mint actually improves the taste of the grapes. Now this is a packet of Pennyroyal mint that I the mice got into last year but I still have some seed in the package and I really like Pennyroyal so I'm going to put that just in the background back there along the other side of the border. It gets about 12 to 18 inches tall and it's really a pretty mint. It's one of the few mints that I don't mind letting it travel around a bit. My little friend here. <laughs> they love toads. Here I have some more companion plants which are very good for grapes. That is going to be my peas. My climbing peas. I've got some snow peas and some uh, sugar snap peas. And for some flowers, some beautiful flowers that you can sow at this time of the year, July and August. Marigolds, I've got some white Eskimo marigold and some alisum. And also chives should be good up here. Chives, I'm uh, not particularly sure if you can, if this is a good time to sow chives. I know it's a, it's a fine time to put in onions, onion seed even. So I'm going to try the chives just because I have a lot of seed and I think the chives would be pretty up here too. So they're not only companion plants for the grapes, but they're also beautiful. They'll add to the beauty of this little section up here, but also they're things that you can put in in July and August. So it all works out together and things are starting to move along pretty nicely up here at the top of the slope. Carrots are another crop that you can sow in July and August and I'm going to do mine in containers. I'm going to try five different containers and five different kinds of carrots here. Now the main requirement if you're going to do it in a pot is that you need one at least 12 inches deep and 12 inches across would be good or even bigger. You also need a nice loamy or sandy soil with, a, with a balanced nutrients in it and all I'm going to do sprinkle my carrots liberally on the top, cover them with a fine little topping of soil, and then I'm going to put a little bit of straw on top of that and then water them liberally. Look, I've got another visitor up here on the slope. I'm getting the stamp of approval from a lot of little critters. Isn't he beautiful? I love turtles. I absolutely love turtles. But actually, he doesn't belong up here. He needs to be down by the creek, so I'm probably going to have to take him down there because he's going up the hill and there's nothing up there. Pretty good job of filling up each tier with a raised garden bed, filling them with plants and sowing them with seed, including that that I've sown in the month of July and August, which is just now starting to come up. But I have one more little area that I really need to have something put here. This is the space between the top tier bed and the little pump house. I got a offer from Vegiga for a, another raised bed in exchange for a review. This is a perfect size for this little section here. The offer came just in time and so I want to put this bed together. So see how easy it is, Let's see if I like it and see if I can recommend this bed. To Pretty you. nice location in order to set up this bed. We've got some shade, a nice cool breeze, and all the parts are in the box that you need. 
to put together this eight foot bed. Now there are 12 different panels. There are four braces, an instruction booklet. Of course, all the nuts and bolts are in the little bag right there. And then I have also some rubber tubing, which goes along the edge to prevent you from uh, harming, harming yourself that there are no sharp edges along the top. Nice color. Well, you will have a lot of bolts to screw in, but they also have included the tightener. Instruction booklet, you'll see that this is called a nine in one bed. And that's because you can put this garden bed pieces in nine different configurations, which is really great. There's only six steps to putting the bed together but you can put it into long and skinny, which is what I'm doing. I'm going to use the 17 inches by two feet, eight foot long, but you could actually double it in height or you can turn it into a rectangle. You can turn it into a square. You can do several different configurations with these parts, these 12 parts. Well, this goes together pretty quickly probably in about 30 minutes I'll be finished. I just put in the bolts first, the screws and the bolts and the washers, and then when they're all in, I hand tightened, then I go back and tighten them with the tool. Well, it only took me about 30, 35 minutes to get this bed put together. It's very simple. The directions were easy to follow. The only thing I would have a complaint about is that the bracing bars, putting in the bracing bars, the directions were not very clear. But it was easy enough to figure it out. Now don't throw away your box because you can put that down in the bottom of your bed and that will just be an extra layer to tampen down the weeds or the grass that's underneath it. In order to fill these beds, it's going to take an awful lot of material. But you don't have to use soil all the way to the top. Thank goodness for that. You can use all sorts of materials to fill this bed. For example, sticks, logs, garden debris, manure. As I get closer to the top, I'd say about eight inches from the top, I start to add our native soil. Now with that native soil, I'm going to start adding some compost, and that's what I'll be planting into, because you only need about six inches really for your roots to go. They're not really going to go that much deeper. I have filled the vegetable bed as far as I'm going to. I'm not going to go any higher than that. I've got plenty of space for planting. Now my overall reaction to this bed is I really like it. I like the look of it. I love the color that it comes in and you can choose from I think four or five different different colors. I like the fact that it is non-corrosive. It's supposed to last for 20 years. We'll see about that. Really simple to put together. In fact it was took me longer to fill the bed than it took to put it together, which is actually the case with all the beds. That's the thing about raised beds. They really take a long time to fill them up. You have to have a lot of material. So what's the point in having a raised bed? Well, for one thing, you don't have to bend over as much. Oops, Mr. Peabody has something to say about this. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's another good thing. The animals can't lay in the beds because they're up off the ground. I really like that. You can control your soil a lot. All those things that I put underneath, the sticks and the twigs and all the compost and the manure, all of that's just going to build up into really, really good soil. Now every year I'll raise the level of this bed and now I'm ready to plant in it. I didn't put it all the way to the top. I haven't put any of my raised beds um, with soil all the way to the top simply because I just didn't have enough soil. But it doesn't really matter. I have got six to eight inches of planting room for the roots in this bed. And so what are we going to plant? The question comes down to is what am I going to put in this eight foot bed? Eight foot by two foot across. So these are things you want to consider as far as your plantings surrounding your bed. And here's what I've got going on. Corn right in front of this bed and sunflowers. Let me show you from the other end. So I'm standing down here on the third tier. 
and the fourth tier is corn, which is going to get really very tall in front of that some uh, zinnias. And behind that are some very tall sunflowers. So we've got super tall, tall, and then about a medium height. Well, once those sunflowers get going, they're going to completely cover the front of that bed. And I'm going to have a lot of shade there. And I did it that way on purpose because I want to put something that is requiring cool temperatures in the afternoon because this will only get morning sun, even with the sunflowers and corn. So I want something here that will like the cool afternoon shade that's going to be provided by those tall plants. So this being late July, early August, what can I sow in this bed at this time of the year? Well, looking at our first frost dates, which are October 23rd, I will be able to sow peas, which I've sown in another garden, and I will be able to sow all kinds of lettuces. So I have some red romaine, some arugula. I'm going to do some bunch onions. These are all companion plants as well. And I'm going to just do some nice leaf lettuces. I don't know why I don't have any charred seed, but I really do need to get some. So that's what's going to go in this big long bed. We'll put the peas on the very end. They will get that nice coolness of the afternoon shade because of the sunflowers that will be growing in front of them and the pump house is behind them. And that's what we need for the lettuces. They will not get roasted and dried out in the August sun. But by the time September gets here and they start producing, then everything will be fine. It'll be cooler outside and we should have a nice crop of peas and lettuce. If you are interested in purchasing one of the Vegica garden beds, look at the link below and go to their website and use the code that I've linked below and you can get a discount on your first Vegica bed. It's really a nice so one. Here on the end of the garden, on the second tier, in this big long eight foot bed, which is eight foot long, two foot tall, and about 18 inches across. This is where I planted back a couple weeks ago the ras short, raspberry shortcake raspberries, which uh, are bushes and they don't get very tall at all. And they're growing very slowly, but they're healthy. The companion plant that I put with them is red yarrow. This fortunately was growing in my greenhouse, so I had some little plants to put in. But what I'm most happy about is the butternut squash coming up over the cattle panel. Looking great. There are going to be so many plants on here and that just thrills me to bits because the last time I bought butternut squash, it was $1.29 a pound. So many recipes for butternut squash. A lot of soups. And you can bake it, and you can chop it up and freeze it, and you can use it all winter long. So that just gives me a thrill to see that. This is the far end of the third tier. And this is an old bucket, bottomless bucket full of zinnias which I basically will be moving a lot of those all throughout the garden. Uh, planted from seed, uh, little sunflowers are just starting to crop up right here. And those will be towering over the corn, I hope. And a lot of sweet corn here. And more butternut squash, which I'm allowing to travel along the ground. Because this is a section where I really couldn't plant anything. It's just so rocky and nasty. And I got some ugly grass here, but I guess that can cushion the leaves of the squash. So I'm just going to let that squash travel on down the hill like this. And down here on the second tier, we have another metal bed. This one's 24 inches across, about a foot tall. And just the other day, I mean seriously, just the other day, I bet it wasn't even three days ago, I put in radishes. Radishes, and I sprinkled lettuce seed. I don't see the lettuces yet. And then I had some really small cantaloupe plants that were looking pretty poorly in the greenhouse and they had to be moved because they had been in there for way too long. That one looks a lot better. Hopefully they will revive. On the second tier also are the round metal beds, which are enclosed by the large log beds. And the variety of plants in here are beans that I just seeded because they can be seeded at this time of the year. I put in some potatoes about a week ago and I have sweet potatoes that have been growing here for a couple weeks. And on the far end in that bed, getting some good sunflowers going. 
and enough marigolds to protect everybody because they're a deterrent from the bad insects. And peppers protected by my waste baskets from my peacocks. This is a beautiful little sunflower. Um, this is called lemon sorbet. And then these in the back. These are going to be pretty big, pretty huge. These are mammoth sunflowers. So we'll see what happens. You can plant sunflower seed every single week. And now walking up to the third tier, I put these metal beds on stone. And I did a lot of companion planting in this bed. I just think this bed looks really good right now. Bugs haven't gotten into it. Plants are growing pretty nicely. So we have a, a trap plant here, which is the nasturtium. But nasturtiums are also great to eat. You can eat every part of the nasturtium, the flowers, the leaves, and they're so beautiful. And in the middle I have peppers. And that is what I have the nasturtiums here for. I want them to protect my peppers, but it looks like somebody's been nibbling. And on the far end here, I have beets. On the fourth tier is a rock bed, rock bed. Along the edges, all along the edges, I put um, marigolds. And a lot of them were planted from seeds, so you can't even see them yet. And then I have these great ladders that I got from Nancy at the estate sale. And along these ladders, I've got some Kentucky green beans growing, cucumbers. They're all pretty small right now, and some patty pan squash. The corn is growing so fast. Sweet corn. Love that. And there's that raised bed. All that raised bed needs right now is um, a trellis for the peas, but since they haven't even started growing, I'm not in any big hurry. This is about all that I can show you right now because I'm not finished, but this is as far as I've gotten here at the end of July. And I'm pretty pleased that it has five tiers of planting area. That's a lot more than I had in my protege. In fact, my protege is basically herbs and flowers at this point. And it has really been severely neglected, unfortunately, due to this, uh, the magnitude of having to do this project. Now, this was this year's project. Last year, it was the greenhouse. This year, it was this slope garden. As you can see over here, there's still a lot to be done. So in the next video, and as the weeks go by, as things start to grow and look a lot better, I'll bring you back up here and show you what else has happened. In the meantime, if you have a slope and you don't know what to do with it, I just think this is a unique and wonderful way to plant a beautiful garden. You might want to start planting your own slope garden over the winter, or it's not too late to start now if the heat where you are at is not too abusive. But I love this garden on a slope. Actually, I'm pretty glad now that I had this slope. For years, I just hated it. But now that it's using, uh, it has a purpose, it's productive, and not only that, I think that as time goes by, it's really going to be beautiful. So from Hopalong Hollow, this is Jerry.